This is Burlington, and here we are in the Channel 17 News Studio for our ongoing Nuclear Free Future conversation. I'm your host, Margaret Harrington, and viewers, please welcome our guest today, Arnie Gunderson, Chief Engineer for Fairwinds Energy Education, Chikako Nishiyami, Nishiyama, from uh, a, re a resident of a prefecture right near where the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant net melted down two years ago on March 11th. And uh, our, our special guest here is Chiho Kaneko, who is an artist and a journalist who has been reporting, giving an eyewitness report of the disaster and the, the terrible accident in Fukushima Daiichi. Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for, for coming back, Arnie, and thank you so much for coming here a long way from Japan and uh, to tell us, uh, to give an eyewitness report of, of what happened. And Chiho, why are you doing this now? Because two and a half years have passed. The American people are reading about the uh, Fukushima and it's it's a given it happened two and a half years ago and we're just going on and and uh, as though in many ways as though it never happened in America. Um, well, I think it, because I'm from the northern Japan, um, you know, a prefecture called Iwate, it was devastated by the, the earthquake and tsunami initially um, and now also influenced by the uh, um, fallout. Uh, from the reactor accident. It really affected, uh, you know, the place that I know very well and people I know, you know, my family, for instance. And so I was not really um, um, set out, I didn't set out to really get involved per se, but just because, you know, I wanted to learn more about what was really happening in Japan. And I started to talk to people and learn, read, and by, by learning more, I realized this is, is the, uh, basically a disaster and crisis, not just for Japan, but for the world. And so that's why I'm c continuing to learn and share what I'm learning. Okay, and when, when did you first uh, find out about Arnie Gunderson and uh, Fairwinds en Energy Education? So when the um, uh, accident happened, our first um, the tsunami, earthquake and the tsunami happened. I was in Vermont, and but get, getting ready to go back to Japan 10 days later. And so I was watching a lot of information on the internet. And, um, but the, the reality of what was happening at those reactors, um, the facts were not really coming forth. And so I was researching on the internet and I realized that a lot of people actually uh, getting information right from Vermont, from Mr. Garni, Arnie Gunderson. And so that's, uh, you know, how first I really realized that yeah, he was disseminating very credible information. And, and Arnie, tell us about those first days of, of what was coming out of Fukushima Daiichi. Well, uh, the accident happened on a, on a Friday. And uh, you know, I woke up and it was 8 o'clock and I'm getting all this information about an accident. And I, I told Maggie, I said, I, I've got to, I've got to watch this. And I knew by about 10 o'clock our time that there was going to be a meltdown. Um, there was uh, a plea went out for extra batteries. And th that's the, uh, the, the batteries are what keep all the instruments running. So if they didn't have batteries, they had no idea what was going on inside the plant. They weren't cooling the plant. So for me, it was obvious. Now let's go 13 hours ahead back to Japan. And what happened at, at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which is, we're in bed, it's, it's um, around 1 o'clock in, in the, in the uh, morning. But 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Japan, there was an earthquake, a huge earthquake 120 miles away from the plant out in the ocean. And about 45 minutes later, uh, a, a huge tsunami came in and hit the entire coast for more than 100 miles. At Fukushima Daiichi, the wave was, um, the ocean rose by um, uh, 45 feet. And the wave that came with the rising ocean was 150 feet high. So the wave actually went entirely over the nuclear plant. Um, but the, the fact that the ocean rose by so much completely flooded all of the safety-related equipment. So in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping, they had lost all of their ability to cool the plant. 
I wake up in the morning and I understand that this plant is going to melt down. So that was the 11th. And then on the 12th, one day later, uh, early in the morning Japanese time, um, there were numerous in, in extraordinarily high radiation alarms going off. Um, and on the 12th, there was the first explosion. Unit 1 exploded. Uh, two days later, Unit 3 exploded. And the day after that, on the 15th, Unit 4 exploded. So we had uh, three of the four nuclear plants exploded on TV. Um, the other one exploded, too, but we didn't see the explosion. Um, all of that released enormous amounts of radiation. And um, most of it went out to sea. Eighty percent went out to sea. Thank goodness. If if the wind had been blowing the other way, like it does sometimes in Japan, Japan would have been cut in half for hundreds of years. It would have been uninhabitable across the center of Japan for hundreds of years. The plume that did hit land, the 20 percent of the radiation that did hit land, um, went predominantly to the northwest. And meanwhile, Chicago is there right near the, the nuclear power plant. And you're watching television? Tell me about that. え、あの、テレビでは12日の夕方から見てまして、その時に爆発ということが分かったんです。12日の夕方爆発ということを見て、その前は富岡町をあの so she was, um, her village is uh, a little bit inland, so they weren't directly hit by the tsunami. So initially, the first day, during the first day, and maybe early part of the second day, her village was busy just um, receiving refugees from the uh, neighboring uh, town of Tomioka, which was on the coast and devastated by the tsunami. And then, so the first time she had any idea what was, you know, what something was wrong at the reactor was on television. That was the evening of the 12th. Oh, my God. And yeah. now, is this a good time to show the uh, the map there and where where uh, sure. Chicago is living? Is this on now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, this is the uh, uh, sort of a Tokyo is right here. And um, uh, epicenter of uh, the earthquake was here. Um, and then, so that's my my home is here, my parents, and this is where Chicago used to live, right here. Mm -hmm. And the reactor blew up right here. Does that, yeah? So where the the bright red is is where the reactor was, and offshore, a hundred miles, is where the earthquake occurred. About right here, I think, somewhere, right? Okay, to the northeast. Yep. And then you live a little further to yes. the northeast. Yes, I am. Um, I'm. I think my sister right here. Just a little bit of hot spot right here. That's about 112, 20 miles from the reactor as the crow flies. And then she, flies. Chicago lives. She 18 lives miles. 18 miles. And so the the refugees are coming to Chicago's village. Yes, right? from yeah. the coast right here. And where is the plume going? The plume was going. This way, so it's going, I guess, the northwest. Yeah. Um, but then, unfortunate thing, I mean, maybe you should ask her directly, but this is a story that she related to me already, so I can tell. Well, you. Is this about her evacuation? Yes, yes. yes. So, should I tell? Or yes, yeah. ask her, where, where were you evacuated to? Um, so, the Hinan no, Keiro nan desu ke domo, kekyoku sono. 最初その屋外退避ということですね。15日の11日で11時頃この内退避でいたんだけど、その避難の決定は15日の夕方まああの避難先がわからないから皆さん自分であの見つけて避難をしなきゃ。で、そこまでね。So it on the 15th, this is the three days after the initial um you know explosion, right? On the government finally um, told the uh, her village people um, that something, I guess, the radiation level is high, that people are basically ordered to uh, shelter indoors. Shelter indoors. The, but that order was short-lived, and I think by that uh, evening of the of the 15th, um, I guess the government told villagers. Um, 
get up. But then they didn't have uh, any particular uh, place for people to go to, so people were told to just leave on their own. And where, what was the communication? Was, was it through TV? Were you watching a television station? So, public radio communication system from the uh, village hall. Okay. Was that a TV station? Uh, it's like a radio, um, you know, sort of a. Um, I don't know if you have equivalent here. It's like an emergency radio oh, yes. emergency thing. Yeah. Uh, announcements. Yeah. But you, you, uh, there was a television station, wasn't there? Where initially? Television. So what are you talking about? Yes. Ah, you didn't see it. No, there was no information. Well, I didn't see it. Well, she wasn't. I guess maybe. Well, on the day of the the earthquake, uh -huh. most of the electricity had been. For some reason, her village did not lose power. Oh. Okay. So she was able to watch television. Now, what television station was she watching? Uh, what TV station was she watching? Uh, what TV station was she watching? Now, let's put this in perspective. So the accident happened on the 11th. I know there's a meltdown, and, and many experts in, in the United States knew there was a meltdown uh -huh. occurring. I was called by CNN on the morning of the 14th, uh. and I was on CNN on the 14th and on the 15th, uh -huh. and I was saying that you needed to evacuate people out to 30 or 40 kilometers, which would have been her village. Oh, so, wow. Um, you know, and I think the other piece of that is that um, our government was also downplaying the accident. Uh -huh. the, the Japanese and the Americans were saying this is this is just as bad as Three Mile Island, but but no worse. And on the 15th, I was saying this is as bad as Chernobyl. Uh -huh. Even though uh, the Secretary of Energy was saying that there's um, th that this is like Three Mile Island. So mm -hmm. the, the, and the difference is a hundred or a thousand times worse. Mm -hmm. So in public, the Americans were doing the same thing that the Japanese were doing. They were uh, not telling the people that the truth. But experts within the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, me, my friends, we understood that people needed to get out quickly and that uh, uh, the most massive meltdown uh, we've ever seen, three nuclear reactors were melting down. Um, was uh, was happening right before our very eyes. And meanwhile, Chicago was there in her own village, right? Uh, and not yet evacuated. Tell me about where where you were evacuated to. Um and じゃあ、西山さん自身はどちらの方に避難されたんですかって。私は仙台の方に、ま、住宅基地にあのコミュニティは郡山の方。あ、そうか、そうですね。私は仙台。そう、ユースマウスフォニュー。そう、うん。So um, so on the 16th, uh, her village officials actually secured another mu uh, city within uh, Fukushima to sort of uh, accept a, a 600, a bunch of uh, refugees from her from the village. So basically, so use the mouse, please. Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops. How about this? Can I can I use that? Okay. Yeah. Can I use of the course. pen? Yeah. So. This is a, a close-up of the map, and this is her village, Kawauchi, and they, this was on the 16th. Um, so the accident moved. is five days old, yes. and she's still there. Yes. Yeah. Well, they said that the uh, Koryama, city of Koryama, uh, which is, I would say, what, um, 40 miles, maybe, um, give or take, and uh, west of the reactor, um, has a, a little convention center, event hall, and they can house you know, a bunch of people. So they said whoever remaining in the village at the time were basically shuttled to Koryama. But as this, um, you know, sort of a, a radiation contamination map shows, ironically, the village of Kawauchi has very, um, was spared for the most by the, you know, radiation. So they ended up moving the uh, people to high radiation level higher uh, place and th that's because they did not have the information this information even though the government the national government had the um, um, plume you know the uh, prediction uh, 
si we're simulations, tracking. Yeah, yeah. tracking. I mean, combination of weather forecast and you know, wind direction and uh, what was happening at the reactor. They had some kind of a, a prediction model available, but it was not released in time. Well, in fact, it wasn't released for a long time, and because they didn't want to cause panic, panic in the public. That's what they say. But because of the lack of information, um, people just uh, moved to you know area where the radiation level was higher. Chicago herself actually went north, uh, Sendai to Sendai, which is the uh, n you know uh, prefecture n north of Fukushima, because that's where her son was. Mm -hmm. So she would have driven through the worst of that radioactive plume. So she actually mm -hmm. went from Kawauchi to Fukushima City, which is the capital of Fukushima, and then went to Sendai. So she went like this, I guess. And it was very chaotic because um, cars, you know, the fuel shortage, you know, the supply route was cut off, disrupted by the, uh, primarily uh, by the earthquake. So, um, you know, people were scrambling to get uh, gasoline. And it took her a long time to really make that trip, she was saying. Well, there's no lesson, you know, because we always think that you'll be able to hop in your car and yeah. go. And, and if there's no gas for your car yeah. and the electricity's out, then yeah. the pumps are not going to run at the gas station. And then, of That's course, right. it, it's likely, too, that the, the roads were very busy with people trying to get out, too. Exactly. So you've got crowds and the entire infrastructure's collapse. Yeah. Could I ask how you felt at that time? Did you feel that you were going to get through it and survive? When she saw the explosion on television, uh, she just felt like this is the end of the world. And in two or three days later, she actually um, had a little bit of a blood, uh, cough, coughing blood, um, and she thought, okay, I got exposed. Mm. That was a feeling. That's not uncommon. There's a lot of, you know, sneezing and coughing blood and the metallic taste. Yeah, And also smell. And also stinging sensation on, on the skin. It's very peculiar smell. The, the smell is peculiar. And you were not in the worst of it. でも、これ見ると、その西山さんよりももっとひどい人がたくさんいたってことですよね。状況はね。I didn't know it at the time, but yes. Yeah, you're right. Did the government demand that people leave the area or or were you allowed to stay if you want? Uh, in in the case of her village, yes, you mean? Yes. So they had to evacuate from her village. Uh, so after the 16th, I think pretty much everybody left. Now when you evacuate, do you take a small bag and leave or do you have to fill your car with私はその、その12日に兄弟たちにこう逃げなさいって言った時にもうお米とまあ大体そういう食料品を持ってったから私自身は息子のとこに行って何とかなるだろう。服とかは持ってたんですか服とかも持ってたんです。うん。ただもう
That's what she took with her. The reason why she stayed until the 16th, I have to explain, was because she was the, uh, at the time, uh, town councilwoman, I mean village councilwoman. So she had to make sure that the, everybody, you know, left uh, before she did. Mm. Yeah. That was a big responsibility to be in care of a lot so of other people. That that was I was determined to stay until the very end. So th was there panic from people? Ah no, but more than that, no. You also tell me, na dose ka ka panic jota ni natte. Sore hoto panic wa okite nai shi. Jijou ga wakatte ru hito wa mo ano kore wa taihen na koto da to iu koto wa wakatta kedo hoton to natte ma shiranai. The majority of villagers were clueless um, about what was happening, so they didn't really um, even show the signs of you know extraordinary panic per se. They were just Confused, very confused. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of people thought that maybe this is a temporary thing. You know, maybe they'll be able to return soon. And what actually happened? Um,でその後どうなったんですかって。その後ですね、あの行政がもう変えるという状況を作った東電とともに、で県とその。so Kawauchi, the village of Kawauchi is a very, very unique uh, uh, case because as you see, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a um, sort of a safe spot within, very, you know, within a sort of a 30 kilometer radius, right? This is like the only place where the color is green instead of red or yellow. So um, the Kawauchi was, became sort of a model project from, um, you know, by the government and to s illustrate, showcase that how safe it is, even though it's close, very close to the reactor. And so they decided to um, pour a lot of money into decontamination of the area and um, they really expedited um, the process of returning people. So last year, year 2012, January 31st, officially Kawauchi was declared um, safe to return. People can go back to live. So, and is that actually true? それは私自身がそれは危険性が分かったから反対しました。それででも住民はその共生すれば帰れるっていう人たちがほとんど。Well, people like myself, uh, you know, I learn information, I get information. I mean, she learns, she gets information um, from internet and other source. Uh, so people like her, you know, learn how, I mean, risky it is. But then, for the most part, you know, people don't know that reality. So people were very, I think it's, you know, latched on to the hopeful news that, yes, I can go back. Yeah. And they have gone back. Right now, maybe 16% not, you know, it's under 20% of people have returned right now. That's a very small number. あの、川木はもう、ま、変皮だから、村だから、その生活環境が整わないということで帰れない、帰らないという選んだ人もいたんですね。the, f the reason why people haven't returned uh, in ma uh, mass, um, it's a little complicated because, you know, the Koryama is a big city and it's, you know, you, it's a very convenient um, place to live. Kawauchi is kind of a rural, you know, out there place. So for some people, once they got used to living in Koryama, maybe, you know, they didn't have reason to rush back home. That could be part of the reason, she says. 
あと女性がまだあの確実にできてないということが皆さん何と分かってる感じ。あ、mm. so, you know, the government sort of a program of decontamination in order to sort of reduce the radiation level, basically scraping the、uh, top soil and putting that you know, radioactive soil elsewhere so that people can live rather quote normally unquote.、Uh, but then that it's it's not moving fast enough in some. And Chiho, you were there, and you were on site you know, all over the area of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster, and you saw, you talked with some of the、uh, the workers there. What did, what did,、uh, what can you tell us about that? I mean, decontamination workers. Yes, yes. Well, I was struck by how um, um, uncaring, you know, those people are about their own work. In other words. It's a, you know, they are handlers of radioactive waste. I mean, nuclear waste and radioactive material. So it's you would think it's a very、um, stressful, you know, dangerous work. But they look like just regular construction workers. And you know, I just saw them taking a break, and then you know, they wear masks、um, while they do the work. So that they don't breathe the radioactive, you know, dust or whatever. But during the break, you know, they're smoking cigarette, you know, <laughs> so they're not wearing mask. And it was really just、uh, so relaxed, and I could, I, I felt really strange that, you know, because you cannot see radiation, there's a sort of a numbing sense of, is this real? You know, is this really dangerous? I mean, you you can't really see, and you, you start losing sort of.、Um, Touch with reality. Well, reality is you can't see. Yeah, Arnie, would speak to that about no, the I, dangers uh, of that. Uh, well, the、uh, uh, uh, most famous quote I take out of the, the accident early on was、uh, a, a Japanese farmer said, "We are fighting a dragon we cannot see,"、mm. and、uh, you know it's there. It, it's almost like a horror movie because it, it, it is lurking, and and you c- you can't no matter what you do, you don't see it. Right. And、um, the old out of sight, out of mind is is what's happening there, and、uh, you know we we've、um, we we saw that at Three Mile Island too, where、uh, people had the taste and the smell,、uh-huh. um, but if you don't die immediately, there people say, well then it's safe. But in fact, you know I'm sure that over the next you know three next thirty years. Um, we're going to see on the order of a, a, a million cancers as a result of this, perhaps not a million fatalities, but a million cancers, just as a result of all this radiation that was been spewed out. Well, may I say that、um, you know, I think a lot of people are concerned about the、um, uh, health effects of the、um, accident, and especially of the children in Fukushima. So. I think、uh, government is definitely、uh, trying to track the uh, you know uh, health of peop- kids under 18 or whatever, and so they're doing you know it, it's almost impossible to test every kids all at once, right? So they're doing piecemeal, and so far they released the、uh, result of the um, um, thyroid、um, you know test、uh, of 38,000. Uh, children from Fukushima, which is a very small sampling, but already they found out of that three、uh, confirmed thyroid cancer, which, and th- those got operated, and seven more suspected、um, as being a thyroid cancer. So that's a fairly、um, sort of a large,、um, high, you know, incidence, I think. Yeah, we call that statistically, statistically meaningful. These、yeah. are these are big numbers. Yeah. And on top of that, they found nodules in the kids. Right. Uh, I think what we're going to see is what, what I would call the Fukushima scar.、Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, these, the, it's the easiest cancer to detect, and it's the easiest cancer to rescue somebody from because the thyroid gets a lump in it, and it gets removed.、Um, so the, the good news is that this the, that the thyroid cancers are easily detectable,、right. and they're not cured; they're removed, and the, and, the, and the kids on drugs for the rest of their life to make up for the thyroid function. But、um, the, um, the w- we saw the, the noble gases were released、right. early in the accident, and、um, matter of fact, we picked them up in the United States on、uh, the twentieth.、Uh-huh. So, within nine days, the United States was getting noble gases. Okay,、and、could you explain to us what the noble gases are?、Please. Ah, your high school chemistry here. Okay, those are the on the left side of the periodic chart: xenon and krypton and argon. Okay,、um, they don't react with anything. They go into your lungs.、Uh, they're fat soluble, 
and they remain in your body, but unlike uh, other chemicals, they don't react. And uh, after Three Mile Island, we saw meaningful increases of lung cancer about five to 10 years out. Mm -hmm. So I think the next wave, we'll see a, a, a iodine-related thyroid, and then we'll see uh, lung cancers, and then we'll see the, what we call the, the, the hard tissue cancers, the um, you know, leukemias and things like that even further out. So this accident has really just begun as far as the health effects go. And could I ask Chicago if her, her friends and neighbors are and herself are concerned about the cancer and that's まあ、今のところはその表面上はそういうことはあまり聞かないんだけど、自分の身内の中でその亡くなった人とか知ってる人でまあ病気になった人がいるので、自分としてはその危険性は分かってるけど。People really don't talk about it much, um, but you know, but then within her family, um, extended family, she knows several people who have died. Um, and you know it's really almost impossible to uh, connect uh, the deaths to the reactor accident. So you know it doesn't really say anything, but she personally feels that um, there's something. I mean, she's very concerned. I think the other piece of that is that uh, the Fukushima Prefecture has not released any health data on its population for the last two years. So we're not getting the statistics that we are getting out of other prefectures around Japan. Um, the Fukushima prefecture, we don't know about stillbirths. We don't know about um, increases in cancers or other mortalities. So, um, you know, scientifically, we're being kept in the dark by the Japanese government. This is very alarming and very sad for all of us. And as we say, it, it, it is a global issue. It's not just in Japan. And, and the fact is that un, unless people such as yourselves come forth and, and tell us about it, we are left in the dark. And so I thank you very much for coming forward and, and talking to us about it. But Chiho, I'd like you to tell me a little bit more about what you saw last November when you visited there and what was the whole impact. The, evidently, the impact on you is that you need to talk about this and you need to get the story out here. Mm. Well, there's so many things that <laughs> I have witnessed, so it's almost impossible to sort of sum up you know, in a, a paragraph or so. But um, I would like to um, um, focus on the um, unexpected uh, consequence of a, a disaster like this, which was the um, basically uh, fracturing of a human community and you know neighbors fighting with each other in Fukushima. You would think that the uh, if people were um, you know they're all victims, so you know they are in the same boat and they going to work together to sort of um, you know survive or just to fight the you know ca cause or whatever. But people just have different priorities and. Their life got completely turned around and then, you know, put into a place where they had no idea what might happen in the future. So everybody is really disturbed and stressed and angry, and their anger is directed to each other instead of to the, the, the people who, or the s social, I guess, ourselves, you know, that's our problem, system that created this accident. And so how do you... Um, remedy that situation, because it's very disturbing to me that the, um, you know, society is fractured and f social fabric is destroyed. And I'm still searching that. So I, I tried to talk to people when, uh, when I was in Fukushima, and uh, the only sort of clue for that hope is that, well, maybe finding the, uh, the true cause of the problem um, is, the fir is the first step. And in this case, why are people stressed out? Why are people, f you know, sort of a bickering uh, with each other? Well, because there was a nuclear power accident. Why was it an accident? 
Well, there was because nucle- there was a nuclear power plant. Why is a nuclear power plant? Well, you keep going. Well, and do, do keep going. Oh, okay. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm interested, you know. So why do we have a nuclear power? Well, I think uh, myself is guilty, but um, we have this um, sort of a one-directional more and more and more kind of uh, expectations about our life, right? I mean, we have a very comfortable uh, life. You know, we have homes and clothes and, you know, I'm not starving. And what more do I need? You know, we just have to start thinking about it. I mean, I have to start thinking about it. I think about it. I do. And, but then, so I think a nuclear power was sold on the idea that the world has this, you know, insatiable energy um, need. Is that really true? Well, maybe it is true, but is that okay? I mean, why do we accept it? You know, I even want to go there. And uh, also, another piece of the mix is that the uh, nuclear power is a product of wars, right? Exactly. And if why do people fight? You know, there's a lot of money to be made in you know in wars. That's a part of it. And I think a lot of our um, economic, um, you know, system is based on that money, and which is closely tied to um, military. And I'm sorry to say, but I, you know, that's to me is really the root of the, the problem. Mm-hmm. And I have to be very honest that you know, well, there's something really not okay about it. <laughs> exactly, and you're you have you have a mission, right? What? Do you have a mission? I don't have a mission. I just want to uh, find out about it myself. And I don't think anything I say is going to change the world, anything. But I, you know, it doesn't excuse me um, from not witnessing and sharing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really up to individual person to think for himself or herself. Um, That's all I can do. I mean, I think the onus is on each of us. No, that's like <clears throat> our story. When I saw this accident happening, you know, I knew that m- my government had covered up Three Mile Island, and I was not going to let it happen again. So I really committed myself to trying to get the word out there as best I could um, to uh, to make sure that this accident was not tr- swept under the rug like Three Mile Island was. And this is a hundred times worse. And could I ask Chikako, hmm? why, why are you here today? あの、so the beginning of uh, her visit was actually um, uh, people in Vermont and Massachusetts. Uh, around the uh, second anniversary of uh, Fukushima, I mean, earthquake, Great Eastern earthquake and tsunami. Uh, so this year, uh, in March, uh, I guess uh, the Safe and Green campaign, um, based in you know Brattleboro and uh, other areas. Uh, I think of people who op- primarily oppose Vermont Yankee. Uh, and they did a sort of a, a action um, around that anniversary, ab- adopting some towns uh, you know, near the uh, reactor, um, I- around sort of a Fukushima Daiichi reactors, uh, and find a town that uh, sort of have a similar distance from the reactor to their town. So town of uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts, I don't know if it's a town or city, but um, picked her village of Kawauchi, and they did some kind of campaign, and they had a little message board that, that they wanted to send to her. And so they were looking for somebody from the village and um, came upon her. 
Uh, so in, instead of sort of um, having it mailed to her, she said, well, maybe she wanted to come here and receive it in person. And so that in turn would uh, give her opportunity to tell the world or tell people in the United States what's really happening. That's why she's here. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming <sighs> here <laughs> to tell us. And, and Chiho, thank, thank you so much for, for everything that you've told us today. And uh, perhaps you will come back again to the, this Nuclear Free Future conversation and tell me how the people in America are reacting to what you're, what you're saying right now. Because it's very, very important that this information gets out. Because it's as, this, as if we are sleeping here. Often we will see a, ma a major story, say, in a, a major newspaper like the New York Times, that a nuclear power plant is on a seismic, uh, is, is, is ready to blow up because of an earthquake, right? And then we forget about it. Or else, in the, even in the article, it says, but this is, has a chance of, of never happening. So that things pass through us, and it's as though we're seeing through a glass darkly here. And we're, when you come, and of course, with Arnie's ongoing efforts in this, and, and you, you coming here, Chicago, thank you so much for shedding light on what is happening. And at the same time, when you're saying that society is unraveling in Japan, at the same time, people are coming forward. That is so true. Yeah. yeah, and connecting. Yes, right, and that's so important. Yeah. And so, on behalf of my viewers, I thank you very much for coming and, and talking to us today. And please come back. Thank you all. Thank you, viewers. Goodbye for now.